Creating speed underwater is absolutely a critical skill for fast swimming. And in order to move fast through the water, swimmers have to create a ton of propulsion. What's different about underwater kicking, obviously, is that swimmers can't use the arms in order to do so. And so they have to use an almost completely different skill set in order to create speed underwater. And that is what we're going to talk about in this video. Hi, everyone. Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. We're going to talk about why propulsion is so important in underwater kicking. We're going to go through the key skills for creating propulsion during underwater kicking. We're going to see what those skills look like. We're going to talk about the challenges of learning these skills. Then we'll go through my favorite solutions for helping swimmers learn how to create a ton of propulsion underwater. And we'll put it all together with some sets that you can use right away or as inspiration to help your swimmers improve. Let's check it out. Why does propulsion matter? Well, underwater kicking is fast compared to the other strokes, mostly because of the reduced resistance. There's less resistance when they're deeper underwater, and when they're in a streamline, they're able to create a lot less resistance as well. However, no matter how perfect their alignment is, no matter how low they can get the resistance, if there's no propulsion, there's no forward motion, there's no speed. So swimmers have to generate propulsion in order to generate speed. And the more propulsion they can create, the faster they're going to go. So swimmers have to learn how to use the body, how to use the legs in order to create propulsion so that they can create speed underwater. So what skills create propulsion underwater? Well, from a principle standpoint, they gotta be able to hold water, they gotta be able to move water backwards with their feet. That means the bigger surface area they have, the more range of motion they have with the kick, and the more acceleration they can have through the kick, the more propulsion they're going to create. And so surface area, one, big feet, they're going to probably be able to go faster underwater. That's why fins work. And the more flexible the ankles are, the more surface area they can get pointed backwards, the more speed they're going to be able to create. Again, that's why fins work. And the longer they can hold those positions, the more water they can move. And finally, the more they can get the acceleration through each kick, the more speed they'll create as well. More specifically, what you see in a lot of great underwater kickers is that they kick through the center line and that the feet end up well in front of the torso, well in front of the body. And so if swimmers aren't kicking all the way through, they're not going to get as much range of motion. They're not going to get as much power through the kick. And that's ultimately going to limit the amount of propulsion that they create. Finally, when we take a look at underwater kickers, there's a nice wave-like action that travels down the body. It ends up and finalizes in a really big whipping action at the end of each kick. The more swimmers can harness that wave, they can get that whipping action through the kick, the more foot speed they're going to be able to create without just kicking the legs. They can use their whole body to generate foot speed, and that's going to mean a lot more sustainable kick, and they're going to be able to do that with much better alignment. And one key skill we'll see is that the up kick sets up that whipping action because the up kick is actually straight. And then when that kick reverses, when the feet snap back down, the swimmers are able to create a lot more propulsion. So let's check out what that looks like in action. So the first thing to notice is you can see his feet end up well in front of his body. He's kicking well through the center line of his body. And so that's going to mean a more effective range of motion, which means a more effective kick due to more propulsion. The other thing you'll see is that during the down kick, the feet are going to face backwards there. You can see the feet almost kind of curl up. They're facing backwards and they're facing backwards for as long as they can until he snaps through the kick. And so that's going to create a much bigger surface area, which means more propulsion. And of course, it's going to be a lot smaller than if he was using his arms, but that's what he makes up for with a higher kick rate. And so each kick's not going to be as propulsive, but swimmers can create a lot of speed by keeping the kick rate up. Then the next piece to pay attention to is after he kicks through, the legs are going to recover straight there, and they only bend right there when his knee starts to come back down. And so the legs do not bend during the up kick. It's a straight kick, and that up action sets up the whipping action of the down kick when those legs are reversed and they're snapped back down. We'll see the same thing with a swimmer on his back. So you can see kicking through the center there, feet are well in front of the body. And then straight with the recovery kick. So right there, those legs are recovering straight. He's snapping through in front of the body and then pulling those legs down straight. So same concepts here, even though the swimmer's on their back, it's the same skill set. It's just on the back versus on the stomach. So snapping the feet through, kicking through the center line, and then recovering those legs straight. So again, it's a relatively simple skill. It's just very difficult for swimmers to execute correctly. 
So speaking of difficulty, what's the challenge? Well, it's very different from the four surface swimming strokes. The kick rates are much higher than the stroke rates that swimmers typically see with the arms. And the range of motion is a lot smaller than what swimmers will use when they're using the arms. And so it's a very different feel. It's a very different skill set. And that can be a challenge for some swimmers to execute that new set of skills. Swimmers also have to get the whole body involved in the kick. And so the name can be a little misleading because it's not really just a kick. It's a coordination of the whole body starting from the upper body. The wave travels down the body and it results in a snapping, whipping, kicking action. However, if swimmers just focus on the kick, which a lot tend to do, then it's going to be a lot more difficult to create speed and it's going to be a lot more tiring to create speed. So swimmers have to figure out how to coordinate their whole body in order to have a great underwater kick. Lastly, the movement of the up kick and the down kick are very different. As we just discussed, the up kick is almost entirely straight, with the down kick involves bending at the knees, bending at the hips, and even snapping through with the feet. So it's two different skills, and a lot of swimmers either tend to kick with the legs really straight, or they bend the knees a lot, when really they have to learn to do both, but only keeping the legs straight with the up kick and then bending them with the down kick. And so it can be very difficult to coordinate those two motions, also doing it at really high speeds. So for all these reasons, helping swimmers learn to improve the amount of propulsion they can create can be difficult. Having discussed the challenge, now let's talk about the solutions. So basically, we have to overcome those challenges. We have to help swimmers learn how to execute the right skills. They have to navigate the down kick and the up kick. They have to learn how to do so at really high rates. And they ultimately have to learn how to move a lot of water in a way that's both sustainable and done at high speeds. So the more effective swimmers can be at learning these skills and the more effective we are at putting them in position to learn those skills, the faster they're going to get better and then the faster they're going to be able to kick underwater, which is ultimately going to lead to faster swimming. So let's take a look at how to make it happen. One of my favorite strategies is what I call flipper kick. When executing this drill, swimmers have to learn to kick through the center line. They're going to be on their back with their hands by their side. They're going to sit up a little bit and they're going to kick and they're going to try to make splash. And so what's really powerful about this is they get really clear feedback with each kick. If they can create a splash, that means they've kicked through the center line sufficiently and they're going to create bubbles. And sustained bubbles indicate sufficient tempo because if they can keep the bubbles up, that means the feet are moving fast enough in order to create sustained propulsion. What's great about this strategy is that you don't necessarily have to tell them more, more, more because they can clearly see the impact. And if they're not doing a very good job, all they have to do is look at one of their friends and they'll see their bubbles, they'll see the impact, and they'll understand that they need to find a better solution. Just as importantly, this strategy can be trained hard. So not only are you developing the skill, you're developing the fitness to execute and repeat that skill, which is equally important. So if we watch here, he's on his back and he's driving those legs fast. And if we take a break, you can see the only way that those bubbles come up is if he kicks his feet up through. And because his hips are down, that means his feet are going to be kicking in front of his center line. And so that's exactly the skill we want. And so if he's not doing a great job of holding the kick, holding the rate, there's going to be an up and down motion with the bubbles. And the more swimmers can maintain a really consistent kick, a really consistent tempo, and really consistent bubbles, not only will swimmers be kicking through the center line, they'll be executing those skills at a high rate. Next strategy is vertical kicking while moving backwards. So again, swimmers have to learn to kick through the center line. The only way they'll move backwards is if they kick well in front of their body, they kick forward of the body, and they kick through the center line. So again, we're providing them with clear feedback with each kick. If they aren't moving backwards, the reality is they aren't kicking with sufficient range of motion. And so it provides them with a clear indication as to whether they're executing the skills correctly. And rather than having some abstract notion of what they're supposed to do, they learn right away what they actually have to do to kick through the center line, what it feels like, because they can see the impact of what they're doing. And again, the strategy can be trained hard. You can use kick rates, you can use resistance work, both of which are gonna help them learn to execute these skills at an even higher level and learn to sustain these skills. And so it's a really simple strategy that provides really clear feedback as to whether swimmers are kicking all the way through the center line and using a sufficient range of motion. So super simple here, he's staying vertical and he's kicking backwards. And you can see the feet are moving well in front of the body. And so the only way he can move backwards is kick in front of the body. That means kicking in front of the center line. And that's the skill we're really trying to hone in on. Next up are drag socks. 
While drag socks are typically thought of as a form of resistance training to get the legs strong, and they are, they're also really effective at developing the skill of the kick. And so to be effective, swimmers have to use that whip-like kicking action that we talked about earlier. If they just bend the knees and move the feet up and down, they're not going to go anywhere because of how the socks work. If they keep their legs completely straight, they're not going to go anywhere because of how the socks work. They have to be straight on the up kick and then snap down on the down kick. Beyond the motion that they're using, it also requires them to put more force against the resistance in order to move forward. And they also have to apply more effective force. That's the skill of it. Because if they don't, they won't move forwards. If they're kicking straight down, they're not going to go forwards. And so it's going to help them learn, one, how to get that whipping action. And then two, how to create a lot of force to overcome the resistance. And then three, how to direct that force in the right way so that they move forwards. It's also going to train the strength of the kick. You're having them use resistance. And that's going to train the muscles and develop their ability to create more force and sustain that force. And the stronger they are, the more force they can create. And the stronger they are as well, the longer they can create the same force. So it's not just that they get faster. They're also able to hold that speed more effectively because they have the strength and the strength endurance to continue to execute a great kick. So if you add drag socks to any sort of underwater work, any sort of dolphin kicking on the surface, you're going to help to develop that skill and to help to develop the strength they need to be effective with their underwater kicking. Next up, we can use resistance, specifically resisting the body. So using a parachute, a cord, a power tower, a sponge, whatever you have access to, resistance is going to build the skill of the kick and it's going to build the strength of the kick in a way that's complementary to drag socks. So resisting the body allows swimmers to feel more pressure on the feet and it requires them to create more force, put more force into the water to send them forwards down the pool. And it also is going to build the strength of the kick, just like drag socks. If they have to exert more force, that means they're going to have to develop more strength. And over time, you're going to get an adaptation there as well. If you don't have access to resistance gear, you can just be creative. So vertical kicking, you can have them hold their hands up. That's going to be more load. You can give them something to hold. That's going to be more load. Kicking against a wall is also going to be effective, as is tombstone kick when you hold a kickboard and they're kicking against the board. So by resisting the body, you get more skill because swimmers have to overcome that resistance and they're going to feel more pressure on their feet as they do so. And we're going to physically condition the legs as well. A key aspect of improving skill and fitness is to ask for performance. And so asking swimmers to go fast and timing underwater activities as much as appropriate is going to be really helpful for getting them to perform in a lot of different contexts. And so if they're asked to perform during whatever drill, whatever activity they're doing, they're going to have to find better ways in order to meet that challenge. And so the more you can challenge them, the more you can ask them to perform, the more they're going to try to strive and figure out how to make it happen. And the performances provide immediate feedback as to how well they're doing. You can also increase the challenge by using different kick rates. You can have them use slower kick rates and faster kick rates and ask them to create speed at all of the rates that you have them use. That's going to help them learn how to create length and speed at the same time. And it's going to help them figure out which kick rate is going to be best for them in order to create as much propulsion as possible. If they can learn to create speed at slow rates, and if they can learn to create speed at fast rates, they're going to be a much more skilled swimmer, and they're going to be much more in tune with what they have to do in order to go fast. And of course, underwater kicking doesn't exist in isolation. Swimmers have to execute these skills while they swim. To help swimmers learn to do that, build propulsive kicking skills into their swim sets. Swimmers have to learn how to create propulsion underwater before and after they swim. It's not just working on the skill in isolation. It's doing it before they break out, and then after they finish a lap, they've got to transition back into underwater kicking. This is what they have to do in races, so we ultimately have to prepare them for that. So what you want to do is create sets where learning this skill is almost inevitable. So you practice some drills, you practice some underwater kicking, and then transition into swimming with really good underwater kicking. In that setup, they get some practice working on the skills, they get to work on the underwater kicking in isolation, and then they get to integrate the underwater kicking with the swimming. Over time, they're going to get better at the skill, they're going to get better at executing the underwaters, and most importantly, they're going to get better at actually underwater kicking during swim sets. And really, that's the end goal. We just have to step our way towards that, and integrating underwater kicking into swimming sets is a great way to make that happen. 
So here's an underwater kicking set focusing on the skill of creating propulsion. They're going to go two rounds through. They're going to go four times, a 12 and a half flipper kick, 15 seconds vertical kicking moving backwards, and then a 25 swim with 12 and a half strong underwater kick. So we're really working on the skills, locking them in, and then just practicing 125 where they transition from the underwaters to the swimming. Then they're going to go into 475 where they go seven, six, five, four kicks each wall by 75. And the effort of the kicks gets better as they go through. So we're giving them lots of opportunities to feel these skills, to feel it out, and then try to apply it when they swim. And they're going to slowly add speed to it, building upon what they did in the previous repetition. So a simple strategy, a simple way to put it all together to challenge swimmers to work towards that skill of executing great kicks in the context of swimming. This is a little bit more of an endurance set. They're going to go four times 12 and a half flipper kick with a parachute fast just to really lock in those skills. Then they're going to go 850, six strong dolphin kicks each wall, solid on the swim. We're going to repeat that three more times. The flipper kick stays the same. Again, just trying to help swimmers really feel what they're doing and create a really good skill, some really good propulsion using both the drill and the parachute. Now they're going to go four 100s on the second round, two 200s on the third round, and one 400 on the fourth round. And the goal is to maintain those six strong kicks throughout, be really consistent with the kicking quality, and just kind of be solid effort on the swim. And so as the distances get longer, it's going to be more and more difficult to hold that. But as we step our way towards that, they should get the confidence that they can make that happen. So this set is more about locking in those skills and then giving swimmers the opportunity to continue to execute those skills not so much at a higher level, but over and over again for longer periods of time. This set is more of a speed set, and they're focusing on taking these skills and executing them at a higher and higher level. So they're going to go 12 and a half flipper kick with drag socks. It's fast at 0 0.60 seconds per cycle. So they're going to take a kick every 0.6 seconds. Then they're going to go 10 seconds backwards vertical kick with the drag socks. It's fast at the same kick rate. Then they're going to go 12 and a half underwater drag socks fast at the same kick rate, and then they're going to go 25 swim fast with 15 meters underwater. So what we're trying to accomplish here, we got some extra resistance. Swimmers have to create more force. They also have to execute that whipping action, and they're trying to stay on the same kick rate and create as much speed as possible at that kick rate. And as they go through, they're going to have faster and faster rates, and the goal is to create more and more speed as they get faster and faster rates. So we're using the drag socks to challenge them. We're using the kick rate to challenge them. We're using different kicking styles to challenge them. And then we're letting them put it all together with a fast underwater kick. And by doing so, we're giving them lots of different opportunities. We're putting them in positions where they can become really effective at creating propulsion with their underwater kicking, which means that they can create more speed underwater. If you want to learn more about how elite swimmers create propulsion underwater, check out the video below.